Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my algebra video tutorial. In this part, we're going to continue learning about radicals, and we're also going to learn about radical equations, as well as complex numbers and imaginary numbers, and I have a whole bunch to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with radicals, you can only add and subtract when the indexes and the radicands are equal. And if you don't know what those things mean, watch the previous video where I talk about indexes and radicands. So let's say you have a 3 and the square root of x minus 4 square root of x and 8 and the square root of x. This is going to work out to be 7 and the square root of x. All right, so pretty simple. Now, when they are not equal, what you're going to have to do is simplify the radicands. So you're going to have, let's say you have 8 square root of 2 plus 6 square root of 8. This is going to be converted into 8 square root of 2 plus 6 and square root of 4 times 2 which can be converted again in 8 square root of 2 plus 6 times square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which can be further simplified to 8 square root of 2 plus 6 times 2 times square root of 2, and we can continue onwards and onwards, simplifying. So this is 8 square root of 2, 12 square root of 2. And now we can go and perform our final operation, which is going to end up being 20 and the square root of 2. All right, so let's go and do another one just to make sure that's clear. Maybe a couple more, actually. So this time we are going to get the cube root of 32 minus the cube root of 108. This is going to be equal to cube root of 8 times 4 minus cube root of 27 times 4, which simplifies further into the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 4 minus the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 4. And then this simplifies down to 2 cube root of 4 minus 3 cube root of 4, which is going to be finally equal to negative 1, the cube root of 4. Let's go and do another one here. So this time we're going to be multiplying through using radicals. So let's say we have the square root of x times 5 square root of x minus 3 square root of y <clears throat> plus square root of y times 2 and square root of x plus 4 square root of y. Okay, so let's multiply through. And whenever we do, we end up getting 5 square root of x squared minus 3 square root of x and y plus 2 square root of x and y plus 4 square root of y squared, which is further simplified down to 5 to the square root of x squared minus square root of xy plus 4 square root of y squared. Okay? And let's go and do one more. This time I want to focus on using a fraction. So let's say we try to get the square root 
of 6x divided by 4. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to take the square root of 6x over square root of 4 and multiply it times 1, which is going to be square root of 4 over square root of 4, which is going to give us a final value of 6 times 4, which is 24x square root of 24x over 4. So there's a whole bunch of radical operations, and up next, I want to talk about radical equations. Now, you're going to be able to use exponents to eliminate the radical, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's say you have the square root of x plus 4, and this is equal to 5, and we want to find the value for x. Well, what we can do here is just take our square root of x plus 4 and square it. And then what we do on the left, we have to do on the right. So 5 squared. This is going to give us x plus 4 is equal to 25. And if we work that out, we see that x is equal to 21. All right, let's go and do another one that's more complicated. So let's say, well, let's make it even more complicated. Let's take 2 times the square root of 17 minus x plus 3 is equal to 9. And let's solve for x. Well, what we're going to do first, 2 times square root of 17 minus x is we're going to subtract the 3, so we'll have 9 minus 3. And then what we can do is we can divide by 2, both sides. So this is going to end up being 17 minus x, like that, over 2, which is going to be equal to 6 over 2, which is going to be equal to 3. So that gives us 17 minus x is equal to 3. And then we can do and square both sides, which is going to leave us with 17 minus x is equal to, and this is going to be 3 squared, which is going to be equal to 9. This is going to further simplify down to x is equal to 17 minus 9. And that leaves us with a final answer for x that x is equal to 8. All right, so there's some radical equations. And now what I want to do is talk about something that confuses a lot of people, which is complex as well as imaginary numbers. Now, basically, an expression of the form a plus b i, where i is an imaginary number that is actually i is equal to, and this is important to know, either the square root of negative 1, or you can look at it another way, i squared is equal to negative 1. This is a complex number. So since the square of a real number can't be negative, complex numbers are used instead to solve equations that require that capability. So that is the reason why we need them. So let's take something like the square root of negative 36. And let's simplify this. Well, we can come in and get the square root of negative 1 times 6 squared, which is going to simplify down to the square root of negative 1 times the square of 6 squared. And this is going to give us a final answer of 6i which this is the i, of course. Let's go and work through a couple more of these. Let's say you have the square root of negative 98. This is going to simplify down, based off of everything we've learned in the past couple videos, into negative 1 times 7 squared times 2, which is going to simplify down to the square root of negative 1 times and 7 squared 
times square root of two, which is going to simplify down to its final form of seven i and the square root of two. Let's do another one. So let's say we have four minus three i like this, and we want to add to it negative five plus six i. This is going to be converted into four minus five plus six i minus three i, which can be given the final result of minus one plus three i. Let's go and work with a couple more because this is a confusing topic and I want to clear it up. So let's say you had four minus three i and you multiplied times this negative five plus six i this is going to work out to four times negative five plus four times six i and you can see i'm taking this times this and then this times this that's what's going on there and then i'm going to do the same with the three so this is going to work out to negative 3i and negative 5 minus 3i times 6i. And if we work this through, we end up getting negative 20 plus 24i plus 15i minus 18i squared and if you remember from the past what i squared means this is going to work into negative 20 plus 39 i minus 18 i squared and since i squared is equal to negative 1 this is going to work into negative 20 plus 39 i plus 18 and then we can get our final form of negative 2 plus 39 i and that is how we go and solve that problem i am gonna do another one let's say let's go and divide this time so let's say 4 minus 3 i divided by negative 5 plus 6 i this is going to be equal to 4 minus 3i divided by negative 5 plus 6i. And let's multiply that times negative 5 minus 6i. Again, we're multiplying by i here. And negative 5 minus 6i. What we're trying to do is go and basically simplify the denominator in this situation. So if we multiply this out, we get negative 20 minus 24i plus 15i plus 18i squared and 25 plus 30i minus 30i, say that's what we were aiming to get rid of, minus 36i squared. This is going to further simplify down to negative 20 times, or actually no, it's minus 9i plus 18i squared, and you remember what i squared is equal to negative 1. So this is going to simplify down to 25 minus 36 i squared. And then we're going to put negative 1 everywhere you have i squared. So this is going to be negative 20 minus 9 i minus 18 divided by 25 mom plus 36 which is going to give us a final answer of negative 38 minus 9i divided by 61. 
So there you go, a whole bunch of ways, new ways to work with radicals as well as complex and imaginary numbers. Hopefully you found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.